Now let us just go to 1 Thessalonians chapter 1 from verse 1 to 10. Now I'm going to read first from verse 1 to 3 first. And uh, as we said, this is the Thanksgiving season. So the Bible tells us so many scriptures about giving thanks to the Lord. And I would like to read some of the scripture that encourage us, remind us, and telling us it is the will of God for you and I to give thanks to the Lord. Amen. Give thanks to the Lord for He is good and His love endures forever. I'm sure that we are very familiar with this scripture. Give thanks to the Lord for He is good and His love endures forever. And the Bible said in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, from verse 16 to 18 said, Rejoice always and pray continually. Give thanks in all circumstances. For this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. So giving thanks is the will of God. So on this season and every day of our life, let us learn to say thank you to one another. Not only to give thanks to God, but also to our loved one, to our neighbor. And even to the stranger, just say, say thank you for the opportunity that we can talk to them. And that is how in our daily life that we have the opportunity, we can just greet one another and say shalom, shalom, and may the peace of God will fill their life. Amen. Now, all of us know very well Thanksgiving is celebrated on every year on the fourth Sunday, uh, on the fourth Thursday of the month of November. So this go back to the the time in 1960, uh, in, in, 16, in 1620, when the pilgrim, they crossed the Atlantic with them in Mayflower. And then we will see that about 102 people traveled for nearly two months, exactly 66 days, okay? For two months with extreme difficulty before they can reach to this land of what we know today uh, and as a founder of this wonderful country that we call USA. So this was very difficult because they was kept in a cargo space of the sailing vessel. The weather was so tough and there was a lot of storm so they could not go up to the deck to enjoy the fresh air, but they have to live inside and I think that many of the Vietnamese who went by boat could understand about this one. So they have to sit inside and under and it was so, so hot, but it's also so cold at night. It was very uneasy for the people just like exactly with the pilgrim. But by the way, during the time of the storm, and during those hardship, this is one thing that our people today never mention. During those times on that vessel, on that ship, they comfort themselves by singing psalms. Hallelujah. Do we still remember that? Or in school today, do our children being taught that these pilgrims sang or sing praises to God using song and praying to God for the peace of their travel. And not only that, when they reached to the Plymouth Rock on December 11, 1620, after 66 days of traveling, now they face with the extreme cold weather in the winter. And without a lot of food, so about 46 of them died again among 102 people. So we heard from the history that the, in the spring of 1620, Squanto, a native Indian, taught the pilgrim to survive by growing food. But then they also faced with the harsh weather once, once again. And in night in the summer of 1621, only to severe drought, the pilgrim called for a day of fasting and pray to please God and ask for a bountiful harvest. And this was the reason 
of Thanksgiving. And this was also the tradition of Thanksgiving that had been celebrated back in the 1621. When the people begin to call on to God, and you know that the Bible said, Ask, and it will be given. Knock, and the door will be opened. Seek, and you will find it. And exactly in that situation that we see, God answered their prayer, and it rained at the end of the day, and it saved the corn crops, and that's how they can survive. So, all of our forefathers in this country, their life, they can still survive today just by the grace of God. And that's why they want to say thanks to God. But it's sad to say today, it's just like 1621, when those pilgrims people, they begin to have a grand celebration where 90 people were invited, including the Indians. The grand feast was organized to thank God for His favor. Amen. For His salvation, for His favor, for His grace, you name it. But the sad thing today is that when the people begin to celebrate, but they even reject God and even deny God. And that is a very sad thing. We have become ungrateful people without knowing it. And you and I have the responsibility to tell to the people, especially in this nation, it is God who saved the forefathers, the founders of this nation. And it is God who blessed this nation as they view their life upon the word of God. Psalm 136 verse 1 said, Give thanks, and that's why. So let us today give thanks to the Lord, for He is good, and His love endures forever. Give thanks to the God of gods, His love endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord of God, and His love endures forever. And as I mentioned earlier, if you read in the book of Psalm chapter 136, for every reason, they always begin with give thanks to the Lord, and then they end it, His love endures forever. So if you want, if you feel sad, if you feel disappointed, if you feel lonely, if you feel that you are being betrayed or abandoned, go to Psalm 136 and declare and remind ourselves, in all of the situation, let us give thanks to God because His love endures forever. Amen. So do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your mind in Christ Jesus. Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 and 7. Now, some of the scripture that you and I just read a while ago, let us pay attention that this scripture do not only use I give thanks or you give thanks, but this scripture reminds us that we need to give thanks. And what does that mean when we talk about collectively the word we? And that's why we are here today. We, not only me and you, but we as the body of Christ. That is why we celebrate together as a couple as a family, as a church, as a body of Christ, as a company, company, as corporation. But in all of those celebrations, do not forget that our God is the one who survives us. Our God is the one who redeems us. Our God is the one who saves us. Our God is the one who delivers us. Our God is the one who continues to protect us and prosper us. And that's why in the book of 1 Thessalonians that we just read a while ago, just only a few scriptures right now, I'm going to just read it to you. The Apostle Paul also used the word we, not only I or you. Yes, there are times that you and I can say, I want to say thank to God. You want to say thank to God. But there's also time that we need to celebrate together. We have to give thanks to God together and don't miss us out this Friday night. Amen? <laughs> okay, let's what the Bible said. First Thess Thessalonians chapter 1 from verse 1. Paul, Silas, and Timothy to the church of the Thessalonians in God, the Father and the love of Jesus Christ, grace and peace to you. You see that? You see that here is including the missionary 
the Thessalonian church and the triune God. Hallelujah. That is we. That is our identity. Hallelujah. That is our, ident our identity. We always thank God for all of you and continually mention you in our prayers. And that's I also want to say to all of you today that we, my family, our family, our church, our ministry, our networks, all we want to thank God for every one of you and each one of you. And we continually mention you in our prayers. Why? Why? In verse number three, say about three important things, and I want to go very quickly about those th three things in verse number three. We remember before our God and Father your work produced by faith, your labor prompted by love, and your endurance inspired by hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. There are three important things here that at least the Apostle Paul want to say thank you, thank God for the Thessalonian believers. And in the same way, we also want to say thank you to all of you at Global Mission Vision Fellowship and all of those who are partnered together. Your work produced by faith. Secondly, your labors prompted by love. And thirdly, your endurance inspired by hope. Let me explain a little bit. What does that mean when we said it? Your works produced by faith. And I'm sure Brother Thomas knows very well, when you serve together with me, you have to go by faith. <laughs> everything you have to go by faith. It's not that we have everything ready, and then we jump in and we begin to do. Even though when we don't have, all we have is only the vision of God. All we have is when we pray and God give us about the plans, about the goals, about the strategy, and then we just obey God and we just move forward and we just walk by faith and not just by sight alone. By faith that you and I serve God here and there. By faith that we receive God's servant who come even though we do not know them. And we thank God for many of you. Every time you have the guests, we always have all of you to come and support together. We thank God by faith that you give offering for mission. By faith, you support the relief trips that we have been doing. By faith, that you support the church planters even though you have never seen them. By faith, that you, you work together with us and serve together with us to train the mission workers somewhere in China, somewhere in Vietnam, somewhere you never seen and you never been there. But by faith, that we also organize many conferences. These, there are countless works that you and I always work by faith. Especially when we talk about vision 20%. When we talk about something is about 20 years from now, there will be an increase of 20% of the population will come to know the Lord Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. It's only by faith that you and I just come together in this way and begin to prepare for that and to present ourselves, to prepare ourselves for that calling. Only by faith that you and I believe and pray for the coming revival and believe that God is going to use you and I in order to prepare for that great revival. Only by faith that we begin to pray for a powerful, anointed Fellowship it is only by faith that we continue to look forward to God's providence for every ministry, for every mission that you and I are being engaged in. And of course, only by faith that you and I are now praying to support for 10,000 prayer lines on vision platform. And it seems impossible. Yes, when I share about this vision, people just laugh. They could not believe it. Three years ago, and even today, now we already have the social platform, but still many people could not believe it. How is it possible that we are going to have about 1,000 languages, but today we almost reach up to about 300 languages in our vision platform. When I share with you before, only one language, and then two languages, and then 10 languages, 
And as we continue to persevere, continue to be faithful in the call that God has given to us, even though we didn't see much, but today, by the grace of God, we keep on moving by the grace of God and by faith that you and I will continue to say and to declare about Vision TV to be reoperated again. And it seems that you didn't see it. But in a few months, you're going to see Vision TV will come back. And not only a few hours, but 24 hours a day. Hallelujah. By the grace of God, it's all by faith. But we thank God. We don't just declare it by faith. But we begin to see the fruit. And the second thing that we see that the labors that prompted by love. If it is prompted by money driven, you will not stay here for that long. Right? Because when you work together, when you serve together with Global Mission Vision, you only give, 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 and give. Not only give the time, but also give finance. Not only give finance, that you have to give a lot of effort and you have to work extra money. But I thank God, just like the Thessalonians, they was willing to serve God and they labor day and night because their love for God and their love for the people and their love for God's service. And I would like to say thank you for all of you. It's only by love that we care for the needy. Only by love that we accept one another flaws and weaknesses. And only by love that we support other ministry. Only by love that we build up one another in faith. Only by love that we are thankful with what we have. Only by love that we help others to grow and be mature. Only by love that we give generously. Only by love that we serve together in unity. And it is with love that you and I will continue to move forward even though we have been mistreated. How many of you have been mistreated in the ministry, in helping others people? But why we are still standing? Why are we still moving forward? Because the love that God has given inside of us. And when you look around, we see about the church members or anyone in the society, without the love of God, you and I cannot move on. Because when we look at the appearance, when we look at how people to be nice to us, to be kind to us, be, to be thankful to us, we would give up the ministry very quickly. But we thank God for the deep love that God has given you. We bless others when we are even wrongly accused. We are going to continue to share the vision even though when people reject it. It's all, always by the love that God has given to us. So not only the Apostle Paul said that he wanted to thank God for the Thessalonians for the works that produced by faith. I also want to say the thank you for all of you for all of the works that you have produced by faith. The labors that have been prompted by love. But the third thing he said that your endurance inspired by hope. And this would be very tough. Yes. Endure, endure, endure. And I don't know how I can still survive even today. Bro Thomas, bro Arthur. How can I, how can I survive even today? How can I endure? It just because of the hope that God has given. I don't see the door, the door being closed. I saw it. Okay, I saw it, but I never allow the door to be closed all the time. Because I know that when one door closes, that God is going to open a new door, a better door. And there would be some time when the door closes, I just wait patiently upon the Lord until the door is going to be opened again. Hallelujah. Yes. It needs a lot of endurance, brothers and sisters. To see a church grow, to see a ministry grow, to see it just like a social platform, for example. Already it took me three years and a half, and I'm still have headache with it. Three years and a half, almost so far, and I'm still having headache with it. 
But I'm still happy with this because I have the hope in God. And when God already revealed it, He is going to fulfill it. Even though that sometimes it may be delayed, but I'm going to see and I already see it. And every time that I work on it, at least I'm the one who work on it. So I know the improvement every time. But for those who did not see the hope, you can give up very easily. We endure even when we still have many needs. We have many misunderstandings. We have persecution and acquisition. We face the tough time. But we still carry on with the vision, with the ministry, with the passion, with the burdens, and for me, with vision 20%, because we always see hope. Hope for your life, hope for the lost, and hope for the kingdom of God, and hope for our church, and hope for my future. I could not share to you one of the things publicly. I may share to some of you a little bit, but I'm willing to work for 20 years and I will tell you, unless the Lord took me home, and I don't think so. Because once the Lord already revealed it to me, He's going to accomplish it. And I'm waiting for 2040. You are going to see something even greater than even many things that we have been doing right now. And I cannot tell you, and you have to wait, you have to endure with me. But I see that hope, right? It's just like when you do your business, when you do your work. And then why we always move on because we see, okay, the money is coming. Okay, the patient are coming. The project is coming. We see the business opportunity is coming. And that's why we continue to move on, move on, even in the time of the COVID like this, even in the time of the turbulence like this, even in the time of what we call that problems, issue, you name it. We move on to the call and the vision, and we reach out to the people and goals. And every time, to be honest with you, whenever we do an, an activity, and when I just see your smile, I'm really happy. I don't wait or expect many things that you are going to take out your pocket and give me something. I never have that expectation. But when I saw your smile, you are happy, you are blessed, you are challenged, you are encouraged, I will make you feel happy. And that's it. Even though I'm tired, but I go back home, I sleep, I'm awake, I'm fine, I'm healthy once again. Why do I have to complain about that? Hope in the Lord. And this hope is not the fake hope. Once you put your fake hope in the changing plane, you can easily be being disappointed. But you and I are putting our hope on the rock of the Lord Jesus Christ. That is Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. He said He will never change. Yesterday, today, and forever never changes. Mm -hmm. I already taste the goodness of the Lord yesterday. Mm -hmm. I already taste the goodness of the Lord today. Mm -hmm. And I will continue to taste the goodness of the Lord for tomorrow. Mm -hmm. I already saw the miracles of God yesterday. Mm -hmm. I already have seen the miracles of God today. And I will continue to see that miracles because our God never changes. And that assured hope will continue to give me the joy to see in the future there will be thousands of new souls to be reached, thousands of new churches to be planted, thousands of prayer lines to be operated, millions of prayer warriors to be connected, and sending out a thousand of church planters and missionaries. And too many of the people who do not understand me, they will think that I'm boasting. And I'm sure. And I understand. Because they do not know what I'm doing, right? It's just the same thing when I don't understand what you are doing. I don't understand about your expertise. I don't know, I don't understand or know about the, your ability. Then whatever you share, I may laugh at you. But I thank God. Come back to what the three things that the Apostle Paul just mentioned. They can all do up that because they do as a team. So we come back together once again. That we share up the up and down experience as a family. That we celebrate together as the body of Christ. That we carry out 
the vision 20% not by me alone. And I'm praying, I'm sorry, that there will be more and more people will continue to see the vision. And that's why today, every day, about 20 plus prayer lines, we have hundreds of co-workers are serving and pray for vision 20%. Other people say, oh, you don't have many co-workers. I said, you're wrong. I see it. You may not see it. Or you may not want to see it. Or you want to reject it. But every day, we have the people just operating publicly. But we also have thousands of people, because of the persecution, they are still hiding themselves, invisible, but they are still faithfully serving the Lord. But there will be a time that you and I will see once again, just like I did the conference before, the thousands of people are coming together to pray and to carry out vision 20%. And with the word, we give thanks. Let us thank God that we are not lonely. And I never see that I'm lonely. Even though sometimes I feel tired to work, a lot of time on computers, but I know that I'm never alone because I have you. I have you. I have you. I have so many co workers who are working online together with me. I have you to back me up. I have you to be there for me when I'm in need. And in the same way, that whenever we are together, that we can declare the enemies will not be able to rejoice. When you and I are together, the schemes of the devil will be destroyed when you and I are holding on together and trusting God together. The devil is defeated when you and I continue to believe and continue to uphold the vision that God has given. And our faith is going to be strengthened because we are together. Our lives are to be fruitful because we are together. Our ministry are to be blessed because we are giving thanks to God together. God's name will be glorified. God's message to be received. And God's kingdom is to be expanded. Because we give thanks to God together. And in closing, let us go very quickly in some of the verse that we are, I'm going to go through in this one. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 1 from verse 4 to 10. That we are going to see when let us come and give thanks to God. Together, every week, every time, whenever we have the gathering. Though, sometimes we may be tired. Sometimes we might sacrifice for something. Sometimes we are reluctant. Sometimes we might face obstacles. Sometimes we may see the costs are so high. Or maybe sometimes the distance are so, so long, just like for Brother Arthur, right? But let us just give thanks to God and come together. Because we know the vision that God has given to us will one day will bear fruit just like in the book of 1 Thessalonians here. Let us come and give thanks to God together. Though the spirit is willing, but the body is weak. Yes, oh, I'm tired. I'm going to try for another two hours, right? For the other. But thank God, both of you are here, bro. Other and master. Amen. Amen. We see their fruit in the works that produces by faith. Prompted the labor, pro, prompted by, by love. We see that there are the demonstration of the power of the Holy Spirit in verse number 5. When they are working together, they are serving together, they are the demonstration of the power of the Holy Spirit. And that's why there will be a lot of healing and deliverance take place. In verse number 6, they leave out the message of the gospel in the midst of the severe suffering. When you and I are just being separated, we don't find the strength. But when we are together, we find the strength by encouraging one another. And even in the midst of the persecution, in the midst of severe suffering, they challenge one another. Come on, come on, come on. Let me tell you the story of the one who was persecuted for many years. Both husband and wife was put in prison. But fortunately, in those days, their prison are next to each other. There are many families, they are being separated. The wife is in 
one prison here and a husband is in another prison somewhere they even never know but fortunately for this family the male prison is here and female prison is here and every morning when they just line up in order to go out and work to go into the field in order to work so as they line up and then the wife begin to look over there and saw the husband and she said and she shout oh man are you ready? And then the man on the the husband on the other side just shout back, "Oh lady, are you ready?" What does that mean? They said, "Are you ready for heaven? Even though we are suffering, even though we are in prison, even though we are persecuted, but I'm ready for heaven. Are you ready for heaven?" And it just light up every day. Brother and sister, for so many years, and every time the authority says, Shut up, shut up, shut up. But every day, they just say, Oh man, oh lady, are you ready? And when the authority said, Shut up, they said that I'm ready for heaven. What can you do to me? And that is the closing to encourage every one of you today that even though sometimes maybe tough, but there would be fruit when we give thanks to God together. When you and I are serving God together, we are bonding together. We become a model to all of the believers in verse number 7. In verse number 8, the gospel is known to Macedonia and Achaia and their faith is known. And I declare together that the gospel is known here. At least it is known in Santa Ana. Every week we're doing the evangelism the strict evangelism over there. And there will be more places to be known and their hospitality is known. Our hospitality is also known and their faithful service and faith are proven and appreciated in the same way the next coming days, the people will only always appreciate our faithful services Amen. and our faith in Jesus' name. Amen. And we want to thank God for the goodness of God that God has brought you and I together so that we can sing for joy to the Lord. We are going to shout aloud to the rock of our salvation. We are going to come before Him with thanksgiving and exhort Him with music and song. For the Lord is a great God and the great King above all gods.